talk about, I guess, the level of our politicians. Uh, Kamala Harris is now pretty much 100%, 99% uh, secure as... Um, as uh, the uh, Democratic no uh, nominee for uh, for president of the United States, she'll be confirmed before the convention in order to get on all 50 uh, state ballots. Uh, she is in the process of actively uh, pursuing a, uh, a VP. Uh, it, it, right now, the betting markets have the number one choice as uh, the senator... Is a Senator Scott out of Arizona, the Kelly Scott, who is the uh, astronaut, the, the fighter pilot astronaut. Um, he is the number one. The idea is, given that she is a woman, box checked, that she's black, box checked, she's South Asian, box checked, she needs a white male as her VP. And uh, having a Jewish white male and his VP, probably liability. So, uh, you know, there's certain minorities. The certain minorities, um, really just one minority, uh, specifically one minority that Mark Kelly, sorry, not Mark Scott, Mark Kelly, uh, there's only there's one minority, only one minority that is considered a liability when it comes to these kind of things, and that's uh, that's being Jewish. So uh, uh, so uh, Rosen's not is still in consideration. Betting odds are he are he's in second place. So Mark Kelly, anyway. Kamala Harris, uh, who stands for uh, very little, uh, has built an entire political career, uh, shifting and, and, and weaving and, and basically accommodating uh, the prevailing winds, uh, is now, uh, you know, potentially going to be president of the United States. Uh, a woman who, um, you know, obviously she has, she has uh, uh, legit experience, uh, just as much experience as anybody else, certainly more than Obama had and certainly more than Trump has had uh, as both a uh, district attorney and as a, uh, as a senator. Uh, but really somebody who has not distinguished herself in particular uh, as somebody who has ideas and who has a, if you will, political governing philosophy. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, and I, I was looking through kind of Articles that say, okay, here's here's Kamala Harris positions and different issues, and it's it, basically she's standard uh, she's standard uh, Democrat on pretty much everything. Uh, she has tried to stay away from being uh, too radical or too extreme or too consistent on anything. Uh, maybe with the exception of abortion, she's she's very pro abortion, which which is good. Uh, but but she's basically followed the the mainline uh, democratic stuff on pretty much everything from AI to uh, uh, to China and uh, an idea of de-risking from China and and uh, moving manufacturing and reliance on China reducing our reliance on China and all, all the standard stuff that everybody kind of talks about and nobody actually knows what exactly to do about. Um, you know, and uh, probably the issue that is most, I mean, the two issues most worrisome in terms of, uh, in terms of Harris, uh, probably the number one issue that's most worrisome is climate change. Uh, she, at least before she was VP, was uh, very much involved in all kind of climate legislation from being a co-sponsor of the infamous Green New Deal, which was a stunning, horrific, statist disaster, uh, to uh, you know, to trying to get a Climate Equity Act, whatever the hell that is, that's scary, uh, passed, uh, which called for an independent office of climate and environmental justice accountability. So this is really scary stuff. So her climate change stuff is super scary. It hasn't really come up since she was a VP, so hard to tell how serious it is, but maybe she was just floating with the, with the uh, far left at some point, but this is far left, this stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, she, she proposed a $10 trillion plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which included uh, climate pollution fee and ending the federal fossil fuel subsidies and whatever those are. 
and everything else. So uh, Harris is big in environmentalism, probably given she's younger, probably this is a bigger issue for her than Biden and, and super dangerous in that sense. So, uh, so this is one where it's, it's really, really, really bad. And, and there's one issue where it's unequivocal that Trump is better than the Democrats, it's on energy and climate. Uh, th that is the easy one. If that was the issue you were voting on, then that's easy because uh, Trump is probably better on climate change, on, on energy than he is on anything else. And the Democrats are worse on energy than probably anything else. So um, uh, that's it. The other one, uh, the other one probably is, uh, is DEI um, on the economy, on uh, immigration, on, uh, you know, even on Israel. I think she just toes the party line. I, I, I do worry uh, Ukraine uh, and everything else. I do worry about DEI with her. She has made some pretty, uh, uh, you know, strong pro-DEI statements in the past. So, so that is definitely an issue to watch for. But I'd say in terms of practically where's the harm going to come from, it's probably going to come from, uh, from the, uh, the climate change uh, stuff, which is where the Democrats are obviously super bad on and where Kamala is toes, toes the party line when it comes to probably toes to the left of the party line when it comes to uh, climate change. Um, the kind of lines of attack between Kamala and uh, Donald Trump are kind of being drawn up right now. It, it seems like Kamala will, uh, will um, uh, talk about Donald Trump as a predator, a cheater, a fraudster, basically a criminal and, and with criminal inclinations. Trump will basically call Harris, quote, he already has done this on his social media, dumb as a rock. So uh, the argument will be, uh, will be Kamala Harris is super dumb. She's not qualified to be president because she's so stupid. And uh, Kamala Harris retort to that will be, you're just a crook. Uh, nobody should listen to you. So uh, that is the quality of the debate that we're going to have. Uh, and um, uh, in a rally in Michigan on Saturday night, uh, Trump called Harris crazy nuts and laughing Kamala. She does have a, a, a pretty stupid sounding laugh. Uh, and uh, so this is going to be a... a, a a, uh, just a, a slugfest of ridiculous, stupid, irrelevant, non-intellectual or anti-intellectual insults. And that is likely to be what it, what it mostly constitutes. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll see. You know, so far, I, I don't think the, 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 the polls mean much. Uh, we don't have any polls since... Uh, Biden uh, uh, stepped aside, really. And, um, but polls from before that, that that looked at Kamala versus Trump showed Kamala doing slightly better than Biden, but still losing the popular vote to Trump and still losing most of the, um, uh, most if not all the uh, swing states uh, to Trump. So it'll be interesting to see you know, if she gets any kind of bump in the polling because of the attention she's gotten for being the nominee now, it'll then be interesting to see whether she gets a bump from the convention in a few weeks, a couple of weeks, I guess. Um, and, and only then, I think, come late August, September, will we really start getting a sense of how, of, of whether there's really any, any chance that... Um, that uh, she has or, or whether, you know, Trump is going to just steamroll through this. Uh, th there was a story that there are rumors that Trump regrets taking on J.D. Vance. That J.D. Vance was his candidate for VP, given that he was convinced he was going to win and he was going up against Biden and he was going to just steamroll. And J.D. Vance just was a way of uh, kind of beefing up his base. And uh, that if he, that Harris might be a slightly bigger challenge, and and then he would have thought about okay, what could he do to attract more independents or or middle of the road people? Um, I don't know if that's true. Hard to tell. But that's kind of a, a story circulating out there.